Hey, what's up, guys? We're going to be playing some Modern today, and uh, I got a really fun and interactive list here with Titan Shift. Uh, for those of you who uh, don't play Modern much or have never seen this deck, um, basically we are trying to ramp and then do some crazy stuff to our opponents with a very particular land. So how does this deck win? Well, we have Valakit the Molten Pitical. Um, this land is not legendary, even though it seems like it should be, because you know it has a comma in its name and it says the blah 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 in all caps, um, or in all capitalized. But anyway, basically, if you have a bunch of mountains out, specifically five, um, every mountain that you uh, play while this is on the field turns into a lightning bolt. You just get to deal damage however you see fit. So we have a lot of mountains in this deck running four cinder glades, which of course are um, uh, fetchable uh, fetchable lands that are both mountains and forests. Uh, stomping ground, same thing, but this is the shock version, so slightly better. Got a ton of basic mountains, bunch of fetch lands, and then of course two basic forests just for whatever. Um, so the idea is that once we get a bunch of those lands out, we can start dealing tons and tons of damage. So. Basically, the entirety of this deck is built around doing just that. So we have a bunch of early ramp in the uh, form of Search for Tomorrow, which can come out on turn one. And, um, well, it comes, you can play it on turn one or suspend it on turn one, and then a few turns later you can go ahead and, and ramp a little bit. Sakura Tribe Elder and Farseek, go ahead, they uh, go ahead and ramp you on uh, turn two. Um, and... Yeah, basically just thin your deck a little bit, get you some mountains that you're going to need so that Valakit can actually get online. Um, and then, of course, we have the namesakes of the deck in the form of Primeval Titan and Scapeshift. So Primeval Titan will allow you to go ahead and fetch up either like two Valakits if you don't have them already, or maybe a Valakit in the mountain and start dealing some damage. Um, but it also just gets you a lot of other land fodder for Scapeshift. And with Scape Shift, if you have seven lands, you can go ahead and sacrifice all of them and then go ahead and find six mountains and then a Valakit. And basically the way that the enter the battlefield effects work for Valakit the Molten Pinnacle, um, if you have six mountains enter at the same time, um, they all see each other. So they all deal three damage. So that means that if you have seven lands and you do Scape Shift, that's 18 damage. If you have eight lands, then that is 32 damage. So should be more than enough to get rid of our opponent. Um, so Primeval Titan is not exactly the main win condition, but if you're going to be dropping this and it resolves, you're probably going to be winning that game. Um, we have some other stuff just to interact with our opponents. We have Relic of Pretendidus because uh, I'm recording this on August 25th, the Sunday before I can only imagine Hogak getting banned. So we're trying to at least kind of hedge against it in the meantime. Uh, we have Lightning Bolt. Um, you know, just to deal with this and that. Summoner's Pack to go ahead and search up Primeval Titan, although there have been a few times that I have um, grabbed uh, a Sakura Drive Elder, affectionately known as as Steve. Uh, and then we have Engineer Explosives to deal with anything in between. Our sideboard, um, we have some interesting stuff. We have Fry to deal with Blue-White Control, Planeswalker stuff, you know, Teferi and Narset, all the things we hate. Um, we got Anger of the Gods to... Uh, deal with annoying board stuff as well as one one main board. Magmatic sinkhole, um, you know, just dealing with kind of beefier beefier threats if you feel like you're going to get clocked out a little bit. Um, Veil of summer, this will definitely help in control matchups or anything where you think that you might get countered, um, or if you're worried about getting stuff discarded against you, you know, with Thoughtseize or Inquisition of Kozilek, you can defend yourself a little bit against it. Damping Sphere for Tron and Storm and a bunch of other stuff. Graph Digger's Gage for Graveyard Decks. Carnage Tyrant, which super happy we get to play with this. Um, this is just kind of a house against a non-creature deck that would otherwise try and counter it because um, it can't be countered and has X-proof. So it's just going to start going to town if, uh, if an opponent does not have some sort of answer to that. Um, we have three options at Bayloths. These are good against burn matchups and then also Jund because, you know, Jund is absolutely making a comeback. Um, if we can discard this to a Liliana of the Veil or something, then that's, that's leaving us in pretty good shape. 
force of vigor to deal with you know annoying artifacts and enchantments including blood moon um blood moon basically just turns off this deck though it does seem to be on the downswing a little bit um so maybe maybe we'll be able to uh to dodge it a bit um reclamation sage for same thing and beast within for other things like that tireless tracker for some of the grindier matchups um so yeah this deck i haven't really played it that much um i'm not exactly an expert However, I wanted to go ahead and get a recording in for, for Modern, and it is a pretty straightforward deck. Um, I have been able to get some some wins with it here and there. I, with, with my limited amount of expertise in this, I would say it is a deck that is probably easy to pilot, but difficult to master. I don't even know if the difficult to master part is correct, but it is pretty straightforward. You just kind of like ramp yourself out and then do scape shift and primeval titan things. Um, probably the most important thing that you can keep in mind in this deck is just the amount of mountains that you have. So we have four cinder glades, four stomping grounds, and then six basic mountains. So that is a grand total of quick math, 14. Um, and the reason that's important is because sometimes you might have to do like a second scape shift or you have a bunch of mountains out already and you just want to make sure that you have enough mountains in your deck before you commit to trying to kill your opponents. Um, so yeah, as far as matchups and stuff, I don't really know. <laughs> the only thing that I know is that this deck absolutely eats up Jund, and that's because I played Jund a decent amount, and I really hate playing against this deck. <laughs> um, I don't know what the actual data shows, but, uh, I, it feels like, you know, 80-20 in favor of, of Titan Shift in, in that matchup. So let's just go ahead and hope that we face some Ren and Sixes and can... Uh, out out ramp and then valicate our our opponents so uh, gonna jump into a league and see you in the first match all right so we get to be on the play that's a good start and let's see what we got here so we have a little bit of ramp with search for tomorrow we do have a primeval titan and we have engineered explosives um, so we have a little bit of resiliency in, in terms of uh, prime times because we got the first one and then the summoners pack to go ahead and fetch it up um, I, this is where my lack of expertise in this deck is going to make it a little bit hard, but I'm going to go ahead and keep this. Um, I feel like going to six, just, you know, when I am already not that good at, uh, at mulligan mulliganing this deck, it's probably not a great sign. We have a little bit of ramp, so should be good enough. So let's go ahead and suspend and then pass pass away opponent is on Tron looks like mono green Tron let's see how we can deal with that one one time counter off of search for tomorrow. Another summoner's pack. That's probably not what we wanted to see. Hmm. All right. So we want to try and get Primeval Titan out as quick as possible, but that might be not enough. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop the wooded foothills and then pass turn. Opponent thinking about what to do during my turn. Answer is nothing. Goes ahead and cracks star for green, and we're going to get ancient stirrings. Sanctum. Okay, so we're not going to get turn three Tron, but still might get turn four Tron. Seems kind of unlikely because they dropped that, but we'll see. All right, let's go ahead and sack Wooded Foothills. Opponent thinking. All right, so let's go ahead and grab Cinder Glade. And now we're going to go ahead and get a basic mountain. Uh, yep, let's go ahead and cast that. Grab mountain. Draw a mountain. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and play Valakit since that comes into play tapped. And we want to try and get 
primeval titan on curve if possible and of course when i say on curve i mean extremely ahead of schedule all right so they they got the mine and then the map so they're gonna have tron next turn um yeah i don't think there's really too much we can do against that hmm kind of in trouble aren't i all right well let's go ahead and grab nothing <laughs> let's not grab anything let's just go ahead and pass turn and hope that we can survive the turn so if they oogan us if they oogan us uh i don't know we, we, we might be okay we might be able to survive a a big planeswalker of some kind all right, so they go star. Ancient stirrings? No, something big? Karn? Karn liberated, okay. And they're gonna go ahead and search up for something big as well. But we'll let that resolve. And then we can go ahead and, oh, they're gonna exile yeah, okay, so they're going to exile Valakit. All right. Well, that's a bit unfortunate. Um, we had a pretty slow start, so... Uh, I don't think there was too much that we could do in this game. Um, yeah, well, let's just go ahead and pass turn. Then go ahead and exile another thing and then play a um, another big thing. All right, let's get rid of Anger of the Gods. We're almost certainly not going to be using that. Opponent has a billion mana. And they're going to cast a big thing. Hmm. So I don't want them to see our hand because we have the two... We have the two summoners packs, so they can just kill us because they could uh, just double cast these. So that is a that is the kill. Um, so I'm just gonna make it so they can't see our hand. So two big mana decks, but our opponent was able to do it a little bit better. Okay, so against Tron, what seems good? Uh, Damping Sphere seems pretty good. Um, Force of Vigor seems all right. Beast Within also seems all right. Um, I think that's kind of it. And what seems bad? Anger of the God seems bad. Um, relics seem pretty bad. And Lightning Bolt isn't the worst. Engineered Explosive seems kind of bad too, because the only things that we can really get with this are like the, the eggs, you know, Chromatic Star and Chromatic Sphere. Um, and they're probably just going to be getting rid of those anyway. I, I guess we can get Expedition Map as well, but, um... Lightning Bolt at least can kill a, a Karn or uh, ping them down so that they're in the... Um, uh, they're able to get killed with Scape Shift plus, you know, seven lands. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and run it back. Run it back like that. And we'll be on the play. And we're going to go ahead and mulligan this. This one is a little bit better. Hopefully we can draw into some action, but we have turn one ramp and then some other stuff. Um, we're going to keep this and let's throw back. Um, what should we throw back? Let's throw back Valakit. All right, so let's go stomping grounds and let's uh, suspend search for tomorrow and then pass it on over starting off with the Tron piece seems pretty good take off a uh, time counter ooh acid moss that seems that seems pretty good so let's go ahead and go foothills and then next turn uh we might be able to get rid of one of their one of their Tron pieces. Alright, Ancient Starrings. 
Sylvan's growing. Yeah. Gonna go ahead and find third piece of Tron, but we're not going to let them. Uh, we're not gonna let them. So let's go ahead and fetch four. Let's grab Cinderglade. And then we will cast Search for Tomorrow. Let's go ahead and cast. Let's find Basic Mountain. Drew Lightning Bolt. Let's play a mountain. And let's Acid Moss their tower. That'll ramp us and then and then set them back a decent amount. And let's get Stomp the Ground. That will not pay two life. So what can we do next turn? Next turn we can, if we draw a land, go Summoner's Pact, play Primeval Titan, and then on the next turn probably win. Okay. Land? Uh, okay, that's a little awkward. Really wish you were a land. Hmm. I think we just have to ship it on back. I think if we get a land, we're in the clear. I think we'll be able to win. I am going to... I'm going to hit them with Lightning Bolt. Uh, do I want to kill... Yeah, I don't think the Ballista matters. I'm going to hit them with Lightning Bolt so they get within range of uh, our Scape Shift combo. All right, Lant. Sakura Tribe Elder. Hmm. Well, kind of a Lant, but they do have Tron now, so that might that might end up being not enough. We're gonna go ahead and play it out though. Blast zone. All right, do they have anything big? <clears throat> and they pass, okay. Well, let's sacrifice the Kura tribe. Let's get a forest. Let's play Primeval Titan. Play Primeval Titan. And we will search up for a Hmm. Yeah, let's search up for a Valakit and a Stomping Ground. And I will not pay two life. And we'll just kill the Ballista. Our opponent is already within range of, of Scape Shift. Alright, so they go ahead and ping us. Okay. So they need to be able to deal with a few things. Ulamog? Blast Zone. Okay. Well, we can beat that, so if that's all he, if that's all our opponent has, then we should be okay. Wait, that was on my turn. <laughs> right. They might have more. Although they might be just trying to deal with the Primeval Titan. No, we got it. Okay. All right, so is there anything that we want to change here? Um, let's see. I kind of don't think so. Maybe Reclamation Sage? Hmm. Maybe Reclamation Sage. I guess it's probably better than, than a Lightning Bolt. So we can, we can probably do that. Or is it better than Chandra? Chandra seems sort of like middle of the road fair, so I'm actually gonna 
run it like that. Okay, um, this seems, what does this seem? It seems keepable. I wish that we had a search for tomorrow, but we have two ramp pieces, we have two lands, and two primeval titans. So we might be able to, might be able to do it. Cinder Glade. All right, so let's go ahead and play that first, tapped. And then pass it on over. There's this tower. Okay. Let's play Mountain and Steve. And then pass it on over. A really good draw next turn would be Acid Moss. Get to deal with one of their lands. Okay, crack for green. Are they going to do something with said green? They are going to Ancient Stirrings. And they are going to get the final piece of Tron. And then they're going to play another sphere. And are they going to crack said sphere? They will. Are they going to Ancient Stirrings again? They won't. All right, so let's go ahead and sacrifice for a basic mountain escape shift huh all right well next turn we have primeval titan mana so let's far seek getting Stomping ground, not paying life, and passing, and hoping that they don't have anything too, too bad. Actually, if they play Karn and deal with the permanent, which it looks like they're not doing, they're trying to do some other stuff, um, that would have been good because Lightning Bolt can then deal with Karn. But it looks like they're just trying to fish for um, something, like Karn. There we go. Different Karn, but still Karn. All right. But they do have that Karn. So what are they going to do? <coughs> uh, okay, they're going to exile our permanent, which stinks because that takes us off Primeval Titan mana, but we can at least deal with the Karn. So that's fine. And then end of turn, we will Lightning Bolt. Okay. Our turn. Another Sakura Tribe Elder. Let's go ahead and play land. Aunt Steve. Hopefully get us back up to uh, six mana again for next turn. Blast Zone. Karn the Great Creator. Going to grab some stuff. And Mycosynth Lattice. Yep, that pretty much locks it, huh? That pretty much locks it. Is there anything that we can do? I don't think so. Ah, uh, one turn away. Oh well. Gonna go ahead and drop to. Hmm. This doesn't do anything, right? Because I can, I can technically cast this <laughs> because it's zero mana, but that does not matter. All right, opponent got us. All right, guys, we are here in match number two. Once again, we get to play first, which is awesome. And do we want to keep this hand? Um, it's not the best, but I'll go ahead and keep it. Same reason as last match. Don't really know what the best hands are for this deck yet. Haven't played it too much, but it does have some ramp. And uh, we can deal with any unfortunate or sad land our opponent might have. 
opponent goes wooded foothills. So they are playing Jund of some kind. My guess is Hogak. Hogak? Trying to play it for the last time. Okay. Search for tomorrow. One turn too late. So let's... Wooded Foothills. And let's fetch for... A mountain. And then let's far seek. And we'll get a stomping ground. And then pass turn. Our opponent just discarded a lot of lands, so I'm guessing that they have a decent amount of lands in hand. But if they are trying to get a little greedy with their mana base, we might be able to get them with the Acid Moss. Arcanist. Okay. Hmm. So what is better? Allowing them the Faithless looting again, or killing one of their lands and ramping us? Well, I guess we can ramp either way, because we can either relic... Uh, well, I guess we can't, actually. We can't We can't relic and then also ramp on the same turn. So let's actually just go ahead and crack Windswept Teeth. And get Stomping Ground. And let's get rid of the Black Cleave Cliffs. And then find a, another stomping ground and not pay for it. And then pass the turn. Um, so he's going to be able to go ahead and attack and then recast Faithless Looting, I'm guessing. But we'll be able to deal with the graveyard after that. So hopefully they don't, they don't do anything too, too degenerate right now. Goes ahead and recasts the Faithless Looting. Ah, yes. The ball lightning stuff. Okay. So we're going to want to deal with that. We're going to want to deal with that. So, I think that even though we can go Primeval Titan, we may need to deal with this stuff first. But let me just think about it. Okay. So, we can go... Relic and Exile have two mana left over and then Explosives on two? That seems pretty good. So let's go ahead and play Relic. And then we can actually uh, suspend a search for tomorrow as well. Okay, go ahead and cast that. Let's suspend the search for tomorrow and then pass turn with Relic up. So they are playing the 12 ball tribal. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna take some, some damage and we're going to discard some cards. So what I'm going to do is let them attack. And then in response to the discard trigger, no, in response to this, I am going to exile all cards from all graveyards. And then draw. So when we discard two, awesome. So we drew a pretty good card. So they're going to hit us down to seven. And then we will discard Summoner's Pact and search for tomorrow. And then Elemental's going to die. Take off a time counter. Drew a land, but 
it's a tapped one, unfortunately. So we'll just play that and then wait for next turn to go ahead and drop Primeval Titan. Opponent fetches. Another lightning ball. Lightning bolt. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what they do with this. Be beginning of combat, I'm going to stop them. Season Pyromancer. Okay. Sure, they can do that. They discard Tassiger. Beginning of combat, I'm going to go ahead and blow up the explosives to deal with the Arcanists. And then on my turn, I will cast the suspended search for tomorrow. We'll grab a mountain, if my opponent lets me, mountain, and then I will do that to kill, let's see, let me think. I think I need to deal with their, their board, so let's go ahead and kill the Season Pyromancer. Let's go ahead and let them do that. I hate the choice part. It's like, ooh, wait a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What do you know? That's lethal. All right, so let's just go ahead and cast Scape Shift. And then let's go ahead and sacrifice all of our lands. And let's grab a Valakit, a Mountain, a Mountain, a Mountain, Cinderglade, Cinderglade, and our final stomping ground. I will not pay two life. And we will target them all at our opponent. Sweet. All right, so against Elemental, Skelemental, tribal. Uh, Baloth seems really good against them. What else seems really good? Graft Digger's Cage. Um, Graft Digger's Cage actually doesn't really do anything because the creatures come back. No, it does. It does stuff about the, the Phoenix and then I think they have something else to bring. Oh, they, they play on Earth, right? Yeah. Okay, so these four these four are probably pretty important. Anger of the Gods also seems pretty good against them. Um, what else? I think that's probably all we can afford to put in. So let's go ahead and take out Chandra. And what else? What else do we want to put in? Um, the relics seem pretty good. The bolts seem pretty good as well. It's kind of unfortunate that all of these seem pretty good. Engineered explosive seems a little clunky. Like it deals with the, it deals with the arcanist and it, and it did help us survive last turn, but, or last game. But I think that the anger of the gods just deal with stuff a little bit better. Um, we can, hmm. A lightning bolt does seem good. Let's just, let's trim. Let's try getting rid of one bolt. And then what else do we want to do? The relics also seem pretty good. Let's just get rid of summoner's packs as well. It's probably not the right thing to do, but whatever. We're learning. All right. If this was a forest of some kind, I would probably keep this, but it is not. So we're going to mulligan. Um, a little awkward. A little awkward, but 
I think that this is still probably keepable. So we'll keep. Um, and let's just throw back a Valakit. And that's it. So on turn one, we can drop Cinderglade. Turn two, we can far seek and then far seek and search for tomorrow. If we draw an untapped green source, that'll be pretty good because then we can ramp out one one turn earlier. All right, so they thought sees us. It's probably going to take scape shift, I imagine. It's our main win condition at the moment. And then pass. Let's go ahead and drop Cinderglade and then also pass. So now since we drew Valakit, I think I actually want to suspend Search for Tomorrow and then drop Valakit. Uh, let me think about that, actually. No, I think I still want to go Mountain mountain, and then um, Farseek. Unearth on the Pyromancer. I'm going to go ahead and just get some card advantage. And then passes the turn back. So let's Mountain and Farseek for Stomping Grounds. No, we'll not pay two life. And then pass turn. And then hope we draw into something and be sad because we cut the summoner's packs, which in this situation probably would help us. Playing decks like this, it, it it's kind of hard to figure out the balance of how you should interact with faster opponents and also keep your own combo like intact enough within your deck. Like you don't want to water down your the efficacy of your of your deck too much, but I don't know. I don't know if it would have mattered too much because we just got our hand ripped to shreds, but what are you going to do? Our opponent isn't doing too, too much, though. So let's, let's go ahead and play Farseek. And we'll grab a Stomping Grounds and not pay two life. But then for this one, we will pay two life. And we will put in Steve. And I'll probably end up blocking with Steve and then, and then sacrificing for a land. Although I can also wait and then drop the Valakut. And then Sakura Tribe Elder to deal some damage. All right. Flashes back Faithless Looting. All right, opponent attacks with both. And I think I'm going to I think I'm going to let that get through. Yeah, I'll take the 3 damage. I'll take 3 damage, I'll play Valakit next turn. And then uh this Sakura Tribe Elder is essentially a lightning bolt. And so is this one. So that's good news. And we can do even... Um, we're not going to attack because we might be able to block something and then sacrifice it and then deal with something else. The um, Skelementals and stuff have Trample, but um, we might be able to block a Pyromancer and then, and then ping one of those things. Our opponent is a little bit low on resources as well. Nothing too scary over here either. Okay, so let's go ahead and... I'm not really worried about the elemental, and this costs five. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and block. I'll just block with one. And then I will sacrifice. I'll get a mountain and then I'll kill the Pyromancer. And I will target Pyromancer, hopefully kill it. And I'll just take the one damage. 
I want to keep this up for any other threats because I'm guessing that they are aware of that interaction where basically this this thing can deal damage whenever it wants. Oh, and so can this one. That's pretty good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and attack then. I know I didn't do it last turn, um, but I was worried about them dropping a uh, elemental of some kind. And now that we have two, we can we can deal with the elemental um, via the the mountain trigger. Yeah, I'll just let that go through. I'm not really too worried about about the the one damage. Like if I need to sacrifice one of these things, I will. All right, fatal push. So now. We are forced to do it. Let's just go ahead and sacrifice for a mountain and kill the elemental. And yes, we do want to use it. Something good? That is pretty good. That is pretty good. Okay, so let's go ahead and attack. Put him down to nine. Okay, we will sacrifice the Sakura Tribe Elder in response to that. And then grab another mountain and ping them. And by ping, I mean bolt. Yes, we'll use it. And then let's just gain a little bit of life here with Obstinate Bailoff. Gain our life. And this feels like pretty good shape. Um, scape shift off the top is just immediate win. Primeval Titan is immediate win. Season Pyromancer. That's a pretty good thing to get back. And they do make an elemental discarding Inquisition of Kozilek. And then a Skelemental. Okay. I think we actually just want to take that here. I don't really want the Bayloth to die. And this is going to die anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. And then we don't have to discard anything. That thing is going to get sacrificed. Something good? Relic Progenitus. All right, I'm going to go ahead and crack that now. Their graveyard's pretty stacked, so I don't think it should matter. Acid Moss. Okay. Well, I think we're going to want to start pressuring our opponent and then maybe deal with the Pyromancer. Hmm. Hmm. Or is it better to just start dealing damage to our opponent? I think I'm just going to attack either way. They've already played two things and their graveyard is empty. Okay, he blocks with the Pyromancer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and Acid Moss them. I'm just going to do a, a quick count on how many mountains we have left. So we have one, two, three, four. So we should be a little careful. Uh, I will not pay two life, but I will ping them. And yes, I will like, I would like to use it. Faithless Looting. It's pretty good off the top. Well, maybe not, because <laughs> they have to discard it, right. Okay. All right, I think that that is it. We're going to go ahead and Anger of the Gods. That'll deal with the Elemental, and then we can just swing in with the Bailoff. Nice. All right, one-on-one. One. See you guys in match three. Ah, oh, we're not as lucky this time.
Match number three, this time we are on the draw against Solomon Grundy, DC comic book character, the zombie guy, keeps coming back. Opponent's really thinking about it, though. And what do we have here? We have turn one ramp, kind of. Technically, it's it won't come out until turn three, but it will let us on turn three go Acid Moth, so, so what can we do? So we can go turn one, search for tomorrow, turn two, Valakit, turn three, resolve this, play Mountain, and Acid Moth them, and then Acid Moth them. That seems good to me. Really depends on what deck we're playing against, but I think that that's Still an okay start. Opponent plays Waterlogged Grove. That smells like Neoform to me. But we will see. Scape Shift was a very good pickup. Let's go ahead and go Windswept Heath for Stomping Ground and Suspend Search for Tomorrow. And then Pass Turn. cycles so playing some new modern horizon stuff huh <clears throat> i don't think titan shift really got anything from modern horizons all right we'll take off a time counter and then we'll play valakit and then pass turn Gemstone mine. Yeah. Feels like Neoform. All right. We're going to go ahead and cash this and then get rid of their gemstone mine. Cash this. And we need to grab a forest here in order to cast the acid moss. We'll play mountain and then on their gemstone mine. We'll cast Acid Moss. And let's get a Stomping Ground. Not pay. And pass turn. Let's see if that slows them down. Hopefully they're choked on mana. That would definitely help us a bit. Okay, not super choked on mana, but... An effective time walk. All right, so we can go Mountain, Acid Moss, again, we're going to draw a card, okay. It's not that big of a deal because we have six lands, so let's go for Sakura Tribe. And the next turn we can go for Search for Tomorrow and then Scape Shift. Hopefully they're not playing any kind of interaction. Okay, let's sack for a forest since we're probably going to end up escape shifting. Valakit, huh? Hmm. Okay, so now we have seven lands. And they have open blue mana. So I can go search for tomorrow. And the question is, do I play around a counterspell in this situation? I don't think I can. So let's just, let's just do it. Two, that one, two. Let's get them all. OK, 
Okay, and let's get Valakit, Valakit, Baker's Man. Summer Ground, Summer Ground, Mountain, Cinderglade, 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 uh, Cinderglade. I will not pay two life. I will not pay two life. Okay. Let's go ahead and just target all these. Let's hope our opponent doesn't have some sort of protection against all these. Really making us go through it, so that has me a little worried. I'm trying to think though, what could help them in this situation? Cool. It's a lot of damage. Hmm. Okay. I'm guessing they're playing a some sort of ah uh, what what was that astral drift reprint? I don't remember what it's called. No, it is called astral drift. Astral slide is the other one, right? So they're playing some sort of like cycle drift deck. Ooh. Okay. Well, that certainly is something. That might not be enough to to save them, though. Because um, we're going to be dealing a lot. Oh, they still concede. Okay, cool. All right, so we are up against Grishol Brand. So what do we have against that? Um, not much, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I always need to reread Graft Digger's Cage for the clause of when something comes from when something comes from from somewhere else. Creature cards and graveyards and libraries. Yeah, okay. So so Graft Digger's Cage seems pretty good because um, it will help with the uh, with um, Neoform and Eldritch Evolution and stuff. I'm not sure what else they have, though. Um, I think that might be the only thing that we want to bring in. DBH. Maybe Beast Within, too, just to deal with a something or other. Might even be able to take them off of a land because they are very land light, for sure. Um, okay, so things that seem bad... Anger of the God seems pretty bad. Chandra seems pretty bad. The rest of these don't even seem great. Um, explosive seems kind of bad, actually. Um, yeah, let's just run it like that. Opponent is on the play. And what do we have here? Um, I don't think this is a keepable hand. We don't have enough early ramp. We got a little lucky last last game with being able to acid moss our opponent and kind of keep them off their footing, but I also think that they did not have a very good hand. So we'll see how this one this one goes. I don't really want to go down to five, so I'll keep this. And we can go ahead and put a relic on the bottom. And that's it. Okay. They reveal some stuff. They reveal two things. Is that enough for them to go off on turn one? Manamorphose. So it's like almost assured that Hogak is getting banned tomorrow. This is getting recorded on August 25th. I'm curious if Wizards is going to do anything about this deck. I don't think it's necessarily the most degenerate. It's not like insane. But it is pretty not fun. It's kind of a feel bad when you get Gristle branded on turn one and there was literally nothing you could do about it. 
Yeah, so I'm just gonna let them I'm just gonna let them show us show us their deck, but I don't really think that there is any recourse that we have. We already had a pretty slow hand, so and going up against like a legacy style of <laughs> of deck. It's interesting. I, I haven't seen this deck in um in the seventy five of this yet. So we're just gonna let them do their thing. See if there's any tech that they end up showing us. But they're gonna draw their entire deck or close to their entire deck and then um lightning storm us for a bunch. We're gonna go summoners packed for a talkathon worm. Yeah. Okay. Now, if Lightning Storm is literally their last card, then... Oh, it doesn't matter. They have Metamorphose. Okay, so they can draw their whole deck and then and then kill us, so no point in, in waiting it out. All right, so I still don't think we really have anything against, against that sort of um, ridiculousness, so... I think I just gotta run it back as it is. And this time we will play. And what do we wanna do here? So this is turn three Acid Moss. Um, turn three Acid Moss and then turn four Primeval Titan. I think I'm gonna go ahead and and keep. We could mulligan for like the Graft Digger's Cage, but we only have it as a one of, so it seems pretty unlikely for us to find it. And they might just have something to deal with it too. So, kind of goes back to what I was talking about in the last match. Is it better to hedge a strategy um, to try and like deal with the disruption of your opponent when they're playing a faster style of deck, or is it better to just go all in on? whatever it is that your deck is trying to do. So our life does not really matter in this at all. So we're gonna go ahead and get Stomping Ground. And we're also going to Farseek here. And we will get another Stomping Ground and we will not pay life. And we'll pass turn. And if our opponent doesn't do anything next turn, we might be able to call, uh, catch them a little off their footing again with the Acid Moss. All right, Allosaurus Rider, and then Neoform. Yep, okay. So then Gristlebrand, and then that's gonna do its thing. Summoner's Pact. Might be able to make them die to the Summoner's Pact? Like it's a possibility? If they can't kill us? So they can draw 21 cards from here? It's a very unlikely possibility. Oh, they actually can't draw 21. They can only draw another 7. Another Summoner's Pact. Nourishing Shoal again. Yep. For 15. And then more cards. Damn. Yeah, this deck is pretty uh, pretty good. <laughs> and with a London Mulligan, seems to be pretty formidable. Oh, modern. So much fun. All right. Nourishing Shoal. Yeah, that's the match. Can't really do anything about that, so... Hmm. You know what? Hold on. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let them go through. I really don't think they can fizzle at this point, but we'll just go ahead and make them go through it. Drawing another seven down to four cards. Laboratory maniac. Yeah. Damn. If we had lightning bolt up, that would be awesome. 
Oh, it wouldn't matter really, would it? Because we could lightning bolt them, but then they could just do this again in response and then draw the seven cards before the laboratory maniac died. So yeah, GG. Can't really do anything against that. Um, let's try and dig ourselves out of this hole. We have Scape Shift and Summoner's Pact and a little bit of ramp. I'd say that we can keep this. Really depends on what our opponent is doing, but we'll see. Opponent thinking, long and hard. Bobble. That could be a few things. Some sort of Death Shadow variant, perhaps. All right, so let's go Windswept Teeth. Let's fetch for Stomping Grounds. Let's pay and let's suspend Search for Tomorrow. And then pass turn. Cracked the bobble. Okay. Spyglass, huh? Well, I think the only thing that they can name here is uh, Wooded Foothills. So they'll probably name that. Just taking me off a of land seems pretty good. Yep. All right. So that's a dead card. Opal. And pass turn. Gonna go ahead and take off a time counter and Valakit. All right, so we don't really have much to do, so let's go ahead and just drop Cinderglade and pass. So there might be some warrant, depending on what our opponent is doing, to Summoner's Pact for Sakura Tribe Elder pretty soon. Mainly because we want to be able to get to seven lands as quick as possible. All right, they go ahead and uh, transmute Teleria West and get Chalice of the Void. Chalice on zero. So that plan is out. All right, so we got to win with Scape Shift now. And if that's the case, I'm going to bolt my opponent because I don't think there's going to be anything else I can bolt. And I want them to get within Scape Shift range. And let's go ahead and cast our suspended search for tomorrow. Grab Mountain. Another Valakit. Awkward draw. Um, okay, so we have two Valakits left. Let's go ahead and drop one. Narset searches for a non-creature on land card. Ugh, that's not good. <laughs> that is very not good. Ah, come on. All right. So let me just reread what Teferi's puzzle box does really quick. Um, because I'm pretty sure that that just is going to make us dump our whole hand. Yeah. It will. Okay. So. So what can we do then? What can we do to that? I don't think too much. Hmm. Okay, we can't cast this. We can't cast this. So it's basically which of these two lands can we play? And then after that, how exactly are we going to get out of this one? So let's play the mountain. And the reason I want to play the mountain is because if if uh, they play um, Puzzle Box, then we want to have as many mountains out so that we might be able to string together some stuff. Okay. 
So we're going to go ahead and discard our whole hand, essentially. Very fun. So for those who were not aware of the interaction, basically this is going to make it so that we put all of the cards in our hand on the bottom of our library, and then we draw the many cards. But because of this, we can only draw one card per turn. And um, we already drew a card from the draw step. So this card would actually be a lot better if it was... Oh no, this is actually a full lock, right? Because we never even get to draw one card. I thought this was upkeep, maybe. So I think that we are pretty much dead to rights. Yeah, because we draw the one card and then we can't do anything with it. So yeah. All right, GG. Can't do anything about that. All right, so things that we want to bring in. Magmatic Sinkhole seems pretty good against that, as does Fry. Um, Beast Within also seems pretty good. And Veil of Summer for counter magic, if they have it, playing blue. Um, I'm guessing this is the one of the Urza lists. So let me just go ahead and cheat by looking it up. Um, bum, bum, bum. No, it is not. I don't really know what they're playing then. Some just some sort of prison style deck um, with Narset and then a bunch of artifacts and stuff. I feel like it's got to be some sort of were of invention style deck. Um, but that makes this questionable. Force of Vigor also seems pretty good. So I'd say that these four are probably the ones that we want to consider. Explosive seems good because this can get rid of Chalice and Mox Opal. And the like. Relic seems pretty bad. Bolt can kill Narset after it ticks down. Anger of the God seems pretty bad. And let's just get rid of Chandra too. Hmm. Chandra at least gets around the Teferi lock. The Teferi's puzzle box lock. So that is something to consider. Why don't we trim one bolt for that and then bring in bring in these guys. And let's try and run it like that. And we'll play first this time. All right. Can we keep a league alive? Um, we're going to mulligan that. We're not going to do it with that hand. And I think we kind of have to keep this one. Let's go ahead and throw back the... Oh, this is hard, actually. Chandra can get us some value, for sure. And then having the two win conditions is also a decent amount of hedging. If we throw back a land that's pretty risky, because there's no guarantee we'll get to four mana. But we're also pretty far from Scapeshift. I'm going to... Hmm. Scapeshift is like kind of how we're going to win, especially if they have ensnaring bridge let's just throw back the summoner's pack and then try it like this we're more likely to draw a summoner's pack slash primeval titan because we have six copies of them and i think we're probably going to be more likely to win with scapeshift anyway opponent is also thinking long and hard about this okay Let's, let's, let's what? Let's drop Cinderglade and then pass turn. Teleria West and Welding Jar. Okay. Let's forest and Play Farseek, set us up for Chandra next turn. Grab Mountain, and then pass turn. So now this can get Cinderglade. Cascade Bluffs. Torpor Orb. All right, so we made the right call. We got rid of the Primeval Titan. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and grab another Cinderglade, and then let's play Chandra, and let's tick her up so that um, we exile the top card of our library, 
because that'll bring our opponent down to 18. And we will not cast it. And then we'll pass turn. So this at least is a win condition, kind of. Bottle Cloister. Okay. So this is the thing that you get rid of your like whole hand, right? Yes, it is. It's okay against our deck. Second copy of Scape Shifts. All right, well, let's go ahead and reveal top card of our library. And we will cast that. And we'll grab a Stomping Ground, not paying life, and play Valakit. And so next turn, we should have a lethal Scape Shift. Fighting for our life here. So opponent should have two cards in hand at this point. <clears throat> Ensnaring Bridge, sure. We're not going to win that way, so no problem. All right, I think we did it. No cards in hand. Let's go ahead and drop Valakit and then scape shift for 18. Let me just double check that there's not something I'm missing. I don't think so. All right. Bunch of artifacts on the field. You always got to just like double check that things are as they seem, that there's not some sort of rule that you're about to break. All right, so let's get Valakit, Mountain, Mountain, Cinderglade, Cinderglade, and Stomping Ground. I meant to get that one. And Stomping Ground. Not pay two life, not pay two life. And let's go ahead and target them with a bunch of stuff. No cards in hand. I don't think they have a way to deal with this. Nice. All right. Can we get to two and two and then maybe three and two? Who knows? Hopefully. Let's go ahead and run it like this. You know what? Now that I think about it, Reclamation Sage would probably be pretty good in this matchup too, huh? Hmm. Well, this card is pretty good in this matchup, but unfortunately, I don't think that we can keep this hand. Not enough green. Also not enough green. Do we risk it? Do we risk trying to get the green? If we get one single green source over the course of, let's say, two turns, then we are in business. Do we play for the win or not? I'm going to go ahead and do the risky thing. I think that the only way that we're going to be able to win this on the draw is by doing what I just said, is by hitting a green source and then start starting to ramp. So I'm going to go ahead and, and keep. And we can go ahead and put the explosives on the bottom. See what our opponent is up to. All right, green source, let's go. Nice, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and lead with that. Hmm, now that I think about it, it actually may have been better to lead with the mountain first. If we got a mountain that is also a forest, that would have helped us out. Opponent draws a card from Mishra's Bobble. Oh man, I totally misplayed too, I did not. I did not do that. That is probably going to cost us the game. I just totally forgot that we had this. So. Ugh. All right. Well, we can we can Acid Moss next turn. If I end up pulling this off, it just shows that I'm a really good magic player. Bottle Cloister. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and sacrifice this for a... Forest. Sure. Get rid of their stuff. All right, let's start acid mossing stuff. We might be able to end up pulling this off. 
Let's get Stomping Grounds and not pay life. And then pass the turn. Let's hope they don't have Torpor Orb. That would make me sad. What do you got? What do you got? Narset. Okay. War of Invention. All right, let's Mountain and Primeval Titan. They're going to go ahead and get um, Ensnaring Bridge, almost certainly. But let's go ahead and get... Let's get Valakit, Valakit. And then pass turn. The reason I'm doing that is because then I can Summoner's Pact for Primeval Titan. And then start chipping away some damage. Yep, Ensnaring Bridge. They just naturally had it. Okay, we're sure. So they're going to lock us pretty soon. Um, so what can we do? So if we go Beast Within on Ensnaring Bridge and then attack, we can deal with the Beast, the Narset, and deal 12 damage to them. And then still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One mana off from one of them. All right, hold on. Let me let's think about this. Let's think about this. So we can get one land off of this, and then another land off of this. That's another twelve. But I think we need to deal with the ensnaring bridge and then the Narset as well. Hmm. All right, so we Beast Within, Ensnaring Bridge. They get a Beast. We attack. We get two Mountains. Four triggers go in the stack. We deal three damage, three damage. What happens if we don't do that? Hold on. So what if we do three damage? I guess it doesn't really matter, right? So we deal three damage, three damage. They're at 15, and then nine, and then six. And then we search for tomorrow. Right? So that's lethal. Okay, so Beast Within, here, attack. Get two mountains. Deal three damage, three damage, three damage, three damage. And then that's 15, and then we search for tomorrow for a mountain. And then I think we're good. All right, so let's go ahead and just do that. Oh, but we only have... Oh, shit. Oh, wait, no, no, we're okay, we're okay. All right, so now we can attack. So we'll attack them. And then we will use the ability. And we will get two mountains that will see each other. So we'll get stomping ground, stomping ground, and not pay life for either. We're gonna deal three damage to that. Three damage to them. Three damage to them. Three damage to them. Okay. So they're going to take a lot of damage. Yep. Okay. So then they take the damage there. For some reason I was thinking this only does three damage. This is actually does six, so we were like actually way over lethal. So let's go ahead and cast search for tomorrow, get a basic mountain, and then kill him. All right, that should be two and two. Nice. All right, two and two. Can we get a winning record? All right, guys, we are two and two. We are on the draw this time. Can we get a winning record with Titan Shift? No idea what I'm doing with this deck. 
but if we end up getting a winning record with it, I'll be pretty happy. So that'd be pretty cool. This is interesting. We're going to get two draw steps. If we get a land, we are in... Actually, what kind of shape are we in if we get a land? Not that good of a shape, to be honest. Because we have ramp and then ramp. And we can get up to four mana. But we can't really do much after that. Escape shift with four mana doesn't really do much. If, this was, if one of these was an acid moss, I would change my tune a lot. But the one land here actually does really help uh, hurt us. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that back. Okay, now this is much better. And we have two escape shifts, so... I'll just throw one of those back and then say that that's enough. Storm. Almost certainly storm. Fetchless storm. All right, let's see if we can uh see if we can beat them. We have some stuff to deal with them on the sideboard. We have the damping sphere. Um and take them off a of land on turn uh, turn three might be good enough. Oh, well, that's not good. Okay. They might be able to go off, like, right now. So let's go stomping ground. And mountain... And Tribe Elder. And then Pass Turn. So they are like playing really quick. That makes you think that they have a ridiculous hand. But let's just see if we can live through this turn. Maybe not. Yeah, they seem to know what they're doing. They're playing real quick. And their name is Karanos Red. Which, for those of you who are unaware, Karanos is blue and red. So... Named his or her deck or name after a favorite deck. Okay. So here comes a skill intensive part of magic. I don't think anything I choose is going to matter here, but let's see. They have one mana. So no matter what they choose here, they're going to end up getting. Let's put past in flames. Hmm. Past flames in the graveyard. And then uh, it doesn't really matter. They're gonna end up they're gonna end up casting it no matter what. But this makes it so they at least only get one cast out of the past and flames. Right? Because yeah, they're gonna go ahead and then do Actually. Wait a second. No, we want this to go to their hand. Because if we give them one and one, then they only have they can pay a red to make three. And then they can't cast this. So we get an extra turn if we if we do that do it this way. So let's split up their mana. Uh, uh yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I almost just went oh shit, because yeah, that is what I wanted to do. <laughs> okay, so they mana morphose anyway. So it didn't matter what I did at all. Cause now they can go pass in flames. And then cast everything that they possibly could imagine. I'm just going to sit here and let them do their thing. Yep, yep, yep. It's actually worse now because they have the Passing Flames in their graveyard now. Gifts Ungiven, again. They're going to get a bunch of mana cards. And... They have six cards in hand. So they almost certainly have another land. So even if we acid moss one of their one of their lands, I don't think that that is going to do anything. I don't think there's really any decision I could have made that would have changed uh, how this ended up panning out. Opponent thinking. Long and hard. All right. So. 
let's put remand because if they have remand in their hands, well, actually, yeah, if they have remand in their hand, there's no way we're going to win this game. And then let's also put Metamorphose in there as well. They're going to be able to pass some flames again based on what I just gave them. So they'll, pr I mean, like, we're pretty much dead. But I don't know. In the 0.1011% chance that we are able to live, remand just like absolutely screws us anyway. It's essentially time walk. All right, just gonna wait until they grape shot me. Nearly there. There we go. All right, so we can go ahead and concede. Okay, so what do we got? We got Damping Sphere. What else do we have? We also have... We have Veil vale Summer, but... Mm, that's not totally dead to them, I guess. Anger of the Gods seems pretty bad. Explosives deals with Baral and... Um, Electromancer. Relic also seems pretty good. Chandra seems pretty darn slow. Hmm. So, what else can we take out? Okay, Bolt deals with stuff. Relic deals with stuff. Asimos is kind of slow, actually. So I'm going to take one of those out. It's taking out ramp, which I kind of don't want, but I think I kind of have to do. So I'll go ahead and run it like that. With our potential winning record on the line. All right. We don't have any of our hate pieces, but we do have ramp. Is that good enough? I don't know. It seems pretty bad. But I don't know how else we're going to win. So let's just go ahead and, and do that. I don't think that just mulliganing for our, our hate pieces is going to be good enough. If we draw like one scape shift or primeval titan, we might be able to pull it off. All right. So let's go ahead and foothills crack for stomping ground and suspend that's not the right thing we want to suspend search for tomorrow all right how quick of a start is our opponent going to have sleight of hand With probably my least favorite art for this card. Take off a time counter. That was a great draw. So now let's Valakut and then suspend this one as well. And then pass turn. So next turn we can... Hmm, that stinks. All right. Take off a time counter. Next turn, this turn, what I was saying, I don't really know what we're going to do. We're going to ramp and then play prime time. That seems like a pretty good plan. Windswept Seath. Okay. Let's grab that for... Forest, play Farseek for Stomping Grounds, not paying. Let's grab 
a Sakura Tribe Elder. And we will see if we can win next turn. And by win, I mean not die. But they have a very good shot of, of winning this turn. Man, I may have punted by getting a, a forest here. I was worried about um I was worried about taking damage for grape shot, but I don't know. It probably wouldn't have mattered. Having the extra mountain here um might make a huge difference. Well, that is not a good start for us. Manamorphose. At least he's thinking. He or she is thinking. They are thinking. Which means that they don't have it immediately. Okay. Having two of them is actually not that bad because things can only get so cheap. Well, that does make that a lot cheaper. And then hoping to peer through the depths and then win that way. Okay. Can you do it though? Can you do it this turn? You could recast Sleight of Hand. And they are thinking about it. We do have the search for tomorrow that is going to be resolving as well. Okay, sleight of hand. Nothing good, please. Grape shot for 10. Okay. Yep, we'll take a bunch of damage. And then they're gonna try and do it next turn too, but we might be able to disrupt them by getting rid of these two guys. If they have any form of mana, Second grape shot. Man. All right. Well, we can't beat that. We can't beat that. I've never put this matchup before, but it seems really bad from our point of view. Um. All right. Well, that stinks. That stinks. 50 play points. Cool. All right, so we ended up going two and three. Um, as far as not having experience with the deck goes, that doesn't seem like the worst. Um, we lost some uh, some matches that I felt like were somewhat un unwinnable. Definitely made a bunch of misplays. Um, however, looking back on it, I think I made misplays in the games or matches that we ended up winning more than than losing. So um, that's that's kind of funny. I feel like the ones that we lost, we didn't have too much say in winning. Because we lost to, let's see, we lost to Tron. I think I made a misplay there. I'm sure that people will point out what that was if I didn't say what it was already. I feel like I, I may have punted with that. Um, with with Neoform, you know, how are you supposed to beat that? <laughs> Basically, like what what deck that doesn't have Force of Negation or whatever is supposed to beat that? Um, and then Storm, you know, like, I don't really know like if I was supposed to mulligan more for the Damping Spheres or or what. Um, if I had more experience with the deck, I might have been able to mulligan a little bit better. Like, is it better to go more all in on the on the the primeval titan or escape shift strategy, or should I just try and and find my hate pieces? I don't really know. But yeah, two and three, you know, is what it is. Um, yeah, so I'll I'll see you guys next time.